Emma has always had more than one identity. A 27-year-old architecture student of Indian descent, she's also an Indian dancer, a talent she's been nurturing for the past 20 years. And for the past six years, she's also been a part-time secretary at a law firm, a reliable source of income. Emma dreams of building airy, open spaces that fill people with emotion when they walk in. Her final project for her architecture degree is the dance theater, where her vision is an ideal space she'd like to practice in herself. But despite the convergence of her passions for architecture and dance, Emma likes to keep her identity separate. She describes herself as very shy. When she performs on stage, she takes on a different persona entirely, to the point that she can't bear to stick around afterwards and receive compliments, preferring instead to disappear. So when her boss at the law firm saw a video of her dancing, she was mortified. That's not me, she said. But of course, it was. The fact is, Emma likes to cultivate different versions of herself. So when she was invited to a casting call to become an AI avatar, she didn't hesitate. She arrived at the shoot, talked to the camera for a few minutes, a short process through which her exact likeness would be digitized. And then a few days later, when she saw her avatar, saying words she'd never said in German, a language she didn't speak, she was shocked. That's not me, she said. And this time, she may have had a point. And now that was several years ago. And ever since then, AI Emma has been moonlighting in a variety of AI roles in the digital universe, including German language instructor, while the real Emma lives out her real-world identities. Now, what is this story of Emma bringing up for you? Excitement, uneasiness, dread. Hope? All of the above? As a founder of an AI cloning startup and someone who's been building in this space for several years, I've felt all of it. When five years ago, almost exactly today, I discovered that thanks to a new field of AI research, you could replicate how a person looked and sounded, I knew I'd stumbled across something big. And with Emma, and so many others trying it. I needed to try it out too. Now, admittedly, I'm not as shy as Emma. And as my friends will tell you, I'm not averse to dancing like no one's watching. Coming face to face with my clone for the first time was quite an experience. Like Emma, I had the feeling that it both was and wasn't me. But as I watched it saying words I didn't have to say, I had the feeling that it could represent me in many places at once, freeing me to be present in the things I value most, like being here with you. I realized then that this breakthrough technology could give rise to a new virtual human economy in which our virtual selves take on aspects of our lives and work that get in the way of us being who we truly want to be. But despite my excitement, I could not shake my feeling of unease at how this AI clone could get abused. Would it mean losing control of my likeness and identity? And in a world flooded with AI clones, what would that mean for human jobs? And as my avatar gained autonomy, how would I ensure that its actions reflected my values? To see things clearly, I had no choice but to face my fears head on. So the first one, losing control of my likeness and identity. Back in 2019, the only examples of AI clones were deep fakes. We've all seen those, right? Like deep fake Obama saying things he never said a precursor to the recent fake Biden robocall urging voters in New Hampshire not to vote, or pornographic deepfakes like the recent incident with Taylor Swift, which back in 2019 represented a whopping 96% of cases. I had to ask myself the honest question, 
Was the deep fake problem something we could overcome? Three things seem critical to make it so. The first was an AI cloning system that gave consent and control to the person behind the clone. And back in 2019, we devised a novel agreement that aimed to do just that. At the time of Emma's shoot, she had signed an agreement granting permission to create her clone, along with commercial terms allowing companies to use it to teach German, sell cars, or help customers. And now, the actors' union, SAG-AFTRA, has taken this idea of control to a whole new level. The 2023 strikes saw that AI cloning technology represented a huge threat to the livelihoods of actors, and its first imperative was to ensure no use without consent. But once the terms of the strike were agreed to, the union went on the offensive and proactively struck a deal with a gaming company to allow actors to lease their voice clones for video games. Now, this deal represented a huge milestone for the budding virtual human economy because it set a standard for how human beings could be compensated for use of their AI assets. Now, the second way to fight against deepfakes was transparency. And back in 2019, we devised our own watermark that we mandated on all videos. And now, a new technical standard is taking this idea of transparency to a whole new level by embedding cryptographic keys in the content as it's being generated. And as this new standard gains adoption across all the major platforms, we can expect the origins of AI Emma, along with virtual humans at large, to be made clear as they travel the web, helping to restore trust in what we see. And the third way to fight against deepfakes is accountability. And new legislation is in the works to create accountability against malicious deepfakes, as well as use of voice and likeness without consent. Now, all of this adds up to what I call ethically sourced avatars, which will be the foundation upon which a virtual human economy can thrive. So, on to my second fear. In a world flooded with AI clones, what would that mean for human jobs? I mean, if virtual people can be so capable, speak any language, be in many places at once, and never sleep, where does that leave real people? Well, what I've found in the last several years is that virtual humans haven't replaced the jobs of real humans, but rather found new areas of service. AI Emma, the German instructor, didn't replace the work of any human German instructors. She was part of an ambitious new service to scale instructor-led learning to millions across the globe. In order to pull this off, tens of thousands of videos needed to be created, a feat that was simply unfeasible for a human workforce. But thanks to AI instructors, this was newly possible helping to solve an unmet need in society, at the same time as creating new sources of income for individuals like Emma and new sources of growth for businesses like the Language School. And there is precedent for this. Airbnb didn't kill the hotel business. In fact, two-thirds of Airbnb hosts are located in areas where there are no hotels. Airbnb drives economic activity by creating new supply to meet the demands of a different kind of traveler. YouTube didn't kill TV. It created fresh supply of additional content catered to every taste and preference. And it gave rise to the creator economy, an entire business ecosystem, contributing $250 billion and counting to the overall economy. Now, a similar thing could happen with the virtual human economy, with one unique difference. While our virtual selves are working round the clock on our behalves, we are free to pursue what we want in the real world. While AI Emma is teaching German in the ether, the real Emma is free to focus on her highest human aspirations. So on to my third fear. As my avatar gains autonomy, 
how would I ensure that its actions continued to reflect my values? I mean, what if our virtual twins lose the plot and turn into our evil twins? For the Black Mirror fans in the room, we've all seen what can go wrong. But thankfully, with ethically sourced avatars that have control, transparency, and accountability, these evil twin scenarios can largely be avoided. Instead, imagine AI Emma, the German instructor, tutoring students on a one-to-one -one basis and spinning up relevant exercises on the fly according to the real-time needs of that student. Or as Emma told me herself, what if her increasingly capable AI clone could help her with her secretarial work at the law firm? She could cover more days, increase her income, and reallocate time to her Indian dance rehearsals, which she says is woefully lacking. Now, we will only empower our AI clones to the extent that it is safe and suitable. AI Emma, the German instructor, will be more censored when teaching children than when teaching adults. And her secretarial clone will be confined to tasks that don't handle sensitive data. Now, all of this would be hard and costly today. But new services will emerge to make this safe and accessible as part of the virtual human economy. Now, where does all of this leave our relationship to ourselves and each other? The fears are real, and new ones are constantly emerging. But in facing up to these fears, and with this expanded notion of self, we can be more present to ourselves and each other, and to the pursuit of our highest human purpose. Like Emma, dancing in the dance theater of her dreams that she has herself architected. Warren Buffett once said, the one thing you can't buy is time. I can buy anything I want, he said, but I can't buy time. But now, in a way, you can. And with that, I challenge you to think, what will your virtual human do for you? Thank you.